Hi and welcome back to the giant world of tiny things and another macro video. Last week we've talked about my camera bag and why I think it's the most fantastic camera backpack in the world. However, this week we're going to have a look inside of it. I'm going to show you what I pack for a typical photo walk and I'm going to share all my secrets and little hacks with you guys. So let's jump right into it. All right, and we're going to start off with the lenses because quite frankly, that's the category that I usually receive the most questions about. And funny enough, my typical go-to lens that I bring for pretty much any walk that I go on is not even a macro lens. It's a telephoto lens and I use this lens for all occasions, for wedding, portraits, wildlife, sometimes even landscapes and of course macro and close-up work. And the lens that I'm talking about is the Canon 70 to 200 mm f2.8 image stabilized version. And it's just a fantastic all around lens. And if you have a close look at it, you can tell that this lens has been getting a lot of views. It's been on a lot of adventures with me because it's a fantastic lens. And even though I don't get to use it as much as I'd love to, whenever I get to use it, it makes for fantastic images. And I know this is not a typical macro lens and I specialize in macro photography, but you know, the best images and the best subjects typically appear when you're not prepared. And so my strategy just is always be prepared. And I've always got this lens on me. And sometimes every now and then I get rewarded with images like this, for example, which I got to take on my way home on a macro walk. And I was just photographing insects, butterflies mostly that day. And on my way home, across the bridge over that creek that I passed for almost a year, at least two times a day. And I've never seen a baby deer cross that creek. Now that day I saw a baby deer just crossing the water in the dim sunlight of the afternoon. And it was such a picturesque scene that I had to place my camera back on the ground, mount my teleconverter to this lens and both to the camera as quickly as I could. And I started shooting and I was rewarded for always bringing this lens. Now, of course, you might say, hey, Max, hang on. This is a macro channel. You're a macro photographer. Why are you talking about this telephoto lens? This is not a macro lens. You can't even get a macro or even a close-up composition with this lens, really. Well, first of all, that depends on your subject, but you are right. This is not a close-up lens by any means. And that's why I also always carry these items in my camera bag. Now, this is not only a set of extension tubes that consists of a 36, 20 and 12 millimeter tube, but it's also a teleconverter on the stack. And both these items just allow me to increase the magnification ratio of pretty much any given lens and just get closer to my subjects. Now the teleconverter obviously pairs really well with the telephoto lens because all of a sudden it turns into a 400 millimeter lens, which is even better for wildlife photography. But the extension tubes as well allow me to make it into a close up lens with a really decent working distance, which is perfect for photographing skittish insects on the larger scale or even small rodents, all sorts of small subjects that are very skittish and likely to flee on you. Benefit from a long working distance and this lens really provides that. Now the teleconverter also allows me to double up the magnification ratio of my macro lenses which is a really ideal combination at least for me it is and so I always bring the teleconverter as well when I go on my macro box unless of course I'm just dedicating the walk to a single setup to a single lens or something like that which I do every now and then because I find that whenever you put limitations on your trivity creativity your creativity really starts to thrive because you have to think within that box that you put yourself in but that's not today's subject today's subject is the content of this bag so let's keep digging into it we talked about the tubes the converter the lens now let's talk about the macro lenses and i actually have three macro lenses that i would consider my go-to choices and the one that's on my camera right now is the 100 millimeter canon ef lens which goes from infinity focus all the way up to 1x life size or if paired with the teleconverter all the way up to 2x which is a really decent range to be covered by just one lens and that's why I really enjoy bringing this in combination with these items that I've just shown you. Now this lens is just part of my macro setup though because you know sometimes 2x just isn't close enough and for those cases I typically bring either <laughs> this baby here which is the Canon MPE 65 a really really beautiful lens that ranges from 1x all the way up to 5x or sometimes 
more often actually I bring the Venus Optics 2.5 to 5x magnification extreme macro lens. Both these lenses do pretty much the same thing. Both are extreme macro lenses but even though this has the smaller magnification range I still prefer it in the field because it's a lot easier to handle and if you extend the two lenses which I'm just gonna do real quick you can see that this one goes really really long. And this one just isn't as bulky and with this lens you know it's really hard to kind of look through the viewfinder, find your subject, look over the lens and see where it is because the lens is just shading your subject from your own side. Whereas with this lens you can easily just locate your subject and then direct the lens towards it so that it pops up in your viewfinder and so this lens is a lot more useful in the field whereas I consider the macro lens by Canon here more of a studio lens and I only put it in my bag to sort of illustrate the benefit of this lens and between these lenses here between the Venus optics the Canon lens and the teleconverter I get to cover a magnification range from pretty much infinity focus all the way up to 2x with this lens and the teleconverter and then the Laowa optics lens continues that range from 2.5x all the way up to 10x if needed when I combine it with the teleconverter and that just is an insane range and the only little gap in that focusing range is between 2x and 2.5x and I've never came across a situation where I was like oh darn it I need exactly 2.3x magnification otherwise my image is just not gonna turn out that's just not a real world scenario so having a gap of 0.5x in your magnification range that you're covering between your lenses really doesn't hurt now those are my go-to macro lenses. I love all of them for the individual reasons, but this really is a beast in the field. It's very, very versatile, very useful, and you can just put it in any pocket like this and it doesn't really bother you or make your setup uh, more heavy or difficult to carry. And then there is a couple specialty lenses, only one of which I'm bringing today that I'm really personally attached to and I'm going to show you all these lenses but the one that I bring most of the time is my DIY fisheye macro lens which is a 17 millimeter super wide angle macro lens and you can learn more about this lens and how I build it in the corner up here. It's been a DIY project that I've been developing for a few months and it turned out really nicely and because it is a super wide angle lens it's kind of difficult to handle and it makes for very unique images so I don't use it a whole lot because I don't want to wear off the effect but at the same time it's a really eye-catching effect and you can buy similar lenses by either Opteca or the original by Venus Optics once again they make brilliant lenses and I'm going to place links to those lenses in the description below because they're really incredibly um, unique and they, they produce a very very nice field of view it gives a little bit of context to your subject right if you usually photograph a bee in a flower you see some of the petal detail and some of the petal color in the background but your main subject is the bee and you just can't tell by the colors that it's sitting on a flower whereas if you're photographing it with this lens you probably get the whole flower in the background and maybe a sunburst somewhere in the corner of your frame and it's just a very neat effect for macro photography now at this point we haven't even talked about the camera yet and the camera I'm using is my Canon 6D Mark II which is a brilliant lens. I love it for a number of reasons but the most benefit is it's fairly high continuous shooting mode. Um, it shoots bursts of I think almost 7 frames per second which is really decent for handheld focus stacking but also if you're just doing manual focusing which is always recommended with macro photography and you're just using the continuous mode and you're trying to get one shot where your subject is in focus in that scenario the more shots you get within a short amount of time the better it is for you now I think that's it for the main comp no it's not even it for the main compartment yet we missed the speed light and of course in combination with the speed light I have a bunch of gels in here just different colored foils that you can attach to the front of your speed light and therefore allow you to just tint the light and mix it with the ambient light or simulate the sunrise and all sorts of interesting things um, it's always fun to experiment with different colors and even though I don't use them a whole lot I like to have them in there because they don't take any space and they just when I want to use them they are there and I like knowing that um, another thing that I carry in here when we're talking about the flash is the remote trigger which allows me to take the flash off camera and just have my light coming from where Ever I want it to come from basically I'm mounting this to the top of my camera and then I'm just hand holding the speed light and shine it from wherever I want it to shine down on my subject which just provides a whole lot of creative space and possibilities when it comes to illuminating your subjects 
Together with my speed light, of course, I carry a case of spare batteries, which is just a must have if you're using a speed light. And there's two different kinds of batteries that I use. One is the analog battery by Panasonic or also produced by Ikea under the name Lada, which is pretty much the exact same battery, just for much, much better value. And the other battery that I use is even better. It's the Cantley 3000 milliampere battery, which is brilliant. It lasts for up to 2000 recharging cycles. It's a little bit on the expensive side, but it's the best rechargeable battery that I've used so far. And so I can definitely recommend this battery, especially if you're doing handheld focus stacking or any kind of work that really relies on fast flash bursts, then this is the battery to go with my friend. Now, that's pretty much it for the main compartment. There's just one more pocket and there's a few interesting things in here. First of all, I carry a couple of those little containers. They are just tiny little clear containers for when I find interesting rocks or maybe a really interesting, um, maybe really interesting shell on the beach or something of that sort. I just like having a container where I can put my finds in and carry them home without crushing them somewhere in my camera bag. Um, what else do we have here? We have a little dust blower for my lenses, but also, well, first of all, this is really important if you're shooting wide angle macro because any speck of dirt on the front element is going to show up in your images. But it's also nice to have when you're photographing flowers or especially mushrooms in the forest and you just want your subject to be clean. So this really helps to clean up your subjects without touching them and leaving imprints or whatever kind of damage on your subject. So this is useful to have as well. Besides that, we also have a third hand tool, which is just useful to hold subjects or flowers or sometimes even photos in place if you're using your own custom backdrops, as I do. And this is my little pouch of custom backdrops. And I've got a variety of different photos in here just for, you know, color contrast and interesting backgrounds when I shoot my macro images in the field. I don't use them a whole lot in the field, but once again, if I want to use them, I like to have them handy and they don't take away any space. By the way, all these images and many more, a gallery of 70, 80 and more images that you can use for your own backdrops, for your own macro photography are available to all my Patreons. I'm going to link my Patreon page in the description below. And if you'd like to support me for a cup of coffee a month and support this channel and the work that I'm doing, you will get some awesome rewards, including access to my free and exclusive backdrop gallery, where you can download these and many other images. Now, besides those photos, I also carry a CD in here. And the CD is not only useful as a reflector on the go, which sometimes is really useful, especially if you have some sort of clamp that you can mount it to, but it's also very useful to provide you with really interesting rainbow colored gradients and highlights, either as a background or if you're just creating specular highlights with it at the right angle, with the right lighting, you can produce really, really gorgeous background colors or background flares on your subjects. Now, this is another thing that just goes with the third hand tool or with that little clamp that I've shown you, but that's by far not everything that I got in here. I've also got an intervalometer in there, which is really useful when you're doing time lapses or when you're just waiting for the perfect shot and you don't know when it's going to appear. So you just plug it into your camera and you set it to one shot every five seconds. For example, when you're waiting at the lookout point of a dragonfly for the dragonfly to arrive, because that's generally what they do. They go back and forth between certain points. And so so you can sort of predict where it's going to arrive sooner or later. And that's a brilliant case for an intervalometer. You just set your camera up, you focus it. It's just making your life a lot easier and you can lie in the sun and read a good book while you're waiting for your image to turn out. So that's why I carry this intervalometer. I of course carry a case with spare batteries. You can never have enough spare batteries. Even though you, I'm using a battery handle, I still need at least two spare batteries when I go on a good photo walk. There's another one of those little containers. And then I've got another container. This one's from a Kinder Egg. And in here we've got a little lens ball. It's a macro lens ball. And I really love having this, even though I haven't really used it in the field yet. I'm just waiting for the perfect opportunity. So I've got a lens ball and of course a little lens ball stand in here. 
And I can't really show you the lens post stand like this, but I'm going to overlay the screen right now and show you what the stand looks like. And that's just really cool. Um, as I said, I haven't gotten to use it yet, but I'm really looking forward to when the right opportunity comes along because I'm sure that's gonna make for some awesome images. For example, if you're just in a really beautiful landscape during sunrise or something like this. And yeah, I can't wait to use this in a photo shoot, but I haven't yet. And that's it with this compartment. We're done with the main compartment, but don't leave me just yet. I've got a lot more interesting stuff coming around. Oh yeah, I missed a couple of things in here. One of them is obviously my shoot through diffuser, which is really useful when you're using a speed light because you don't want your light to be too harsh, but it also folds up really easily and you can store it in your jeans pocket if you want it to be easily accessible and you're not using it at all times, but I typically just carry it in the back of my camera bag. And then I've got some bubble wrap in here and that's just not to prevent my bag from getting sore because the backpack really does a good job with that. But this is for me to kneel down on if I'm shooting on muddy grounds or if I'm shooting early in the morning and the ground is wet with two, all sorts of situations where you just would get your knees dirty by kneeling down and shooting at low angle perspectives. That's when something like this is really incredibly useful. It also makes your life easier if you're kneeling down on, um, let's say, rocky grounds or something like that. You can just fold it up and put it under your knee and it just feels a lot better than kneeling directly on the rocks. Okay, that's it with this compartment this time for sure. Let's close it up and see what else we can find in this bag. Um, let's continue with the side compartment because I see there's a few things in here. First of all, we've got my mister and this is just perfect to simulate dew drops in the field or to produce specular highlights in the background if you're shooting at a large aperture and you just spray a little bit of mist into the background, into the sunlight, that makes for really, really nice bokeh. The next item is a bottle of sugar water and this is something that I use to not only attract insects but to also help them out whenever I find a hungry bumblebee in the field or you know sometimes you come across insects that are just not in very good shape and then it's very nice to have sugar water just to give them a little to give them that extra boost to get back to their nest or wherever they need to go so this is a win-win situation for me and my subjects it attracts them and it feeds them and of course i also got this little case right here i've got a syringe which allows me to supply or provide that sugar water to the insects because i cannot just put it into their mouth they are a little bit too small for that so i like to place a few drops with the syringe on a leaf or on a blade of grass and then they can just suck it up and enjoy Besides the syringe, I've got a couple paint brushes in here, which allow me to either reposition really tiny subjects, typically that's something I do in the studio, or to clean up really small subjects. And that's useful in the field as well. As I mentioned, sometimes you're photographing flowers and you just want to clean up the petals without actually touching them, or there's just a speck of dirt on the stamen that you're photographing, and then it's nice to have a paint brush that doesn't leave any marks on your subject, but allows you to clean it up. And because I enjoy them so much, I've got two different sizes in here. Here. Then next we have another little macro hack and this pouch right here, that blue little blob, is a camping towel or a camping dishcloth. Basically it's just a really large lens cloth made from microfiber. It dries really quickly and it's just super nice to have a lens cloth that size always accessible. And I think I'm going to find links for all these items and place them in the description below because especially this thing is just it's so incredibly useful and I would never have thought of using this for photography or about purchasing that if I would not have started photography while I was already backpacking and while I already had this on my backpack. That was very convenient and I can just wholeheartedly recommend this. It's like a 10 buck investment and it's really worth it. Now, of course, I also carry some spare batteries in here. I carry spare memory cards because you never can have enough space. There's nothing crappier than running out of memory space when you're photographing. And on the other hand side, I've got some cleaning wipes and another lens cloth because, you know, if you lose it or if it gets wet or if it gets dirty, then you just want a plan B to clean up your lenses, especially as I mentioned that fish eye lens is very, very, um, what's the word? Darn it, what's the word? 
so very susceptible, that's the word. As I mentioned, that fish eye lens is just very susceptible to dirt specks and just minor specks will ruin your images or cause you a lot of work in post-processing. And so I rather keep my lenses clean. On the other side of the bag, we've got, of course, my little rain jacket for my camera bag, which allows me to protect my equipment and keep it safe if I get caught in the rain, which happens every now and then. And it's nice to be prepared. And um, let me see if you have something in here. No, not today. This compartment is empty. On the front, of course, we've got my tripod, which I don't use a lot for macro photography, but this tripod can turn into a monopod pretty easily. And that's something that's very useful for macro photography at large magnification ratios, or of course, for wildlife photography. Also, I use it for filming every now and then, but I really just bring it every now and then because I don't always need it. And I don't always want to carry it around. Now, how does this thing open? I can't open it. Well, we're going to leave it closed for now. It's a new strap that I just added because I was camping and I added a mat to sleep on. And now I stuffed my tripod in it and I can't really get it open. Never mind. And here, I think we've got the last item of today's video. And this is something that I always use for video work as well. And unfortunately, it's on already, but you can't really see it in the bright sunlight. This is a super bright, insanely bright LED lamp. And this is not even the main lamp. The main lamp is on this side and it just is battery powered. It provides 50 watts in LEDs and it's just nutty bright. It's perfect for shooting macro in the evening or as a fill light, but mostly I use it for video work. But it also very conveniently doubles up as a power bank. Just let me show you. It's got a little USB plug down here, which is incredibly useful. And especially if you've got a USB chargeable camera, as many people have nowadays, or if you're using USB rechargeable batteries or something like that, it's just brilliant to be able to recharge those gadgets on the go. And I think that's it for my camera bag. This is what I typically bring. I hope this video was of use to you. I hope it helped you. And I'm really glad that you watched it all the way to the end. Now you can help me simply by pressing the like button down below. Leave me a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to this channel. And just if you have a minute, leave me a comment. Tell me which was your favorite item or what's something special that you can only find in your camera bag. I'd love to read about it. And I'm going to see you next week with another video. Until then, stay creative, keep shooting and have a good time. Cheers.